What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's quick tutorial, I'll be showing you how to set up your Raspberry Pi as a proxy server using the Squid open source software on your Raspberry Pi. In today's video, we will be using the Raspberry Pi 4B model, but really you can use any model you would like as long as it has the capability to download the Squid software, which is free. So you may be asking right now, what is a proxy and what is the benefits of using a proxy if you have never heard of it before? Well, essentially it's highlighted in this diagram. It is an intermediate layer between your client and the internet that handles requests and other network aspects. A lot of the times it's used for security or caching purposes to enhance the speed of requests. And many workplaces even require you to connect to a proxy for these benefits. Nonetheless, in today's example, we'll be using it to aid us in web scraping because a lot of the times when we attempt to web scrape from our local computer, we will be throttled because the, the website we're attempting to web scrape from will eventually catch on to our IP address and it will throttle our request, which will slow down the web scraping process. So in order to get around this, we can use the Pi as an intermediate layer as a proxy server by funneling our requests from our local computer to the Pi's IP address. We can essentially cycle our IPs to enable us to scrape faster. So I'll be showing you how to get that set up in this video. So we'll be running a Python script from our local computer in the end of this video to send a request to the proxy server, which will then funnel the request to the website we'd like to scrape and send us back the results, which can allow us to scrape faster and harvest data more quickly. So enough being said, before we get into it, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and even better, consider donating to the channel if you enjoy such content, and let's get started. Okay, so in order to get started, we just want to download Squid, which is the open source software we're going to use to enable the proxy to start on our Raspberry Pi. So in order to do that, we just want to first update the package installer on our Raspberry Pi by typing in sudo apt update. Next, we want to install squid. So really simple, sudo apt install squid in a terminal. And the next thing we want to do is we want to edit the config file of squid because this config file essentially uh, has the, the networks or the IP addresses that will allow you to connect to this proxy server. So by editing this config file, we can edit the restrictions, make our network more, more strict or less strict by editing the IP address ranges in this file. We're not gonna get too much into the detail of this file. We're just gonna edit this file and allow all IP addresses on our local home network to connect to our Raspberry Pi. So we're in here in this file. It is a large file. So we just want to search a specific keyword, which will take us to the section we want to edit. And let's just type in ACL local net SRC 192, okay? And just type in enter. So that was control W to search. And then I typed in and I, I typed in enter. And as you can see, I already have the section edited here. Make sure yours looks the same as mine. So pretty much what I'm doing is I just commented these guys out. And the only thing I want here is I added these two lines. I believe they weren't there before, I forgot. If not, just add them. If they were, just uncomment them. So this ACL local net source 192.168, yada, yada, is essentially allowing all devices on your local network to connect to this proxy. So this is typically the format of devices IP addresses on your local network. So you should be fine. Most people watching this video, this should be good to go to allow your local computer to connect to your Raspberry Pi proxy server and also add this line as well. So that's all we're doing here at a high level. So we just commented some things out, added two lines to enable local devices only to connect to this proxy server. And we're just going to save this file. So I already, I already edited this file. So if I try to control X and exit, it's not going to ask me to save. So let me just add a line here and show you how it works. So type in control X because this nano editor can be a little confusing for some people. So type in control X and it's gonna say save modified buffer. Just type in Y and just type in enter after that. And it should be good to go. So you should have saved the file after that and made the necessary modifications to allow your local computer to connect to this proxy. As long as you're using the same internet connection, that should work. And the next thing we want to do after that is we want to restart the squid service because the config itself will actually not be taken into effect unless you restart the squid service. So just give that a quick moment there to actually reset. It takes about 30 seconds to actually do that. And yeah, overall, it's pretty cool how simple we can edit the configs and restart the service and get it up and running with just a few simple steps. So we're almost at the end here after we restarted it. And that should be essentially the last step we need on our Raspberry, side, our Raspberry Pi side of things before we jump to our local computer. 
Okay, so it looks like it's good. And the last command I will show you just to show that it is running for a sanity check if you don't have any typos, is you want to type in, sorry, I'm going up here because I actually did this before. And if you go up on your keyboard, it shows you the commands you ran. So we could just type in sudo systemctl status squid.service. Because I, I forgot the commands on the top of my head. So this just shows us that it is working just fine. So there's no errors here. And you could type in that command to check like what's going on in the squid server if it's not working as expected. And of course, there are various other squid commands you could use for systems level checks, but that's beyond the scope of this video. But you could see everything looks good to me, nothing uh, red flag. And now that we're done here, you should have squid up and running on your Raspberry Pi. Let's jump to our local computer to the Python script to show you how to set it up and connect a proxy from there. Okay, so now that we have Squid set up on our Raspberry Pi, let's just jump back to our local computer and run a Python script. The Python script we'll be running is the example we have here, very simple Python script. And I'm just using Visual Studio Code as my editor. And the first thing you want to do to run this Python script to send requests is we want to pip install the packages we are using in this Python script. So we are using the requests library and we are using the BS4 library. So requests is just to send requests and the BS4 library at a high level is just a really popular library we use for web scraping and it allows us to create these soup objects as you could see down here, which contains the, the response content from the URL we are sending our requests in a nice format that we can use for parsing and looking for patterns. So that's all it is at a high level. We're not gonna do too much. We're just gonna print it out on this video, but really that BS4 is probably one of the most popular uh, libraries for web scraping. So once we have those installed, just going down the script, the next thing you could see here are these proxies. And in these proxies, we are setting up with our Raspberry Pi IP address. So this is this value right here up to the 0.111. And in your case, you will have probably a different IP address for your Raspberry Pi. So in order to get the IP address for your Raspberry Pi and substitute it in here, let's jump to the Raspberry Pi side of things to show you how to do that. Okay, so in order to get the IP address of our Raspberry Pi to use for our proxy in the Python code, as we just mentioned, you simply want to go back to your Raspberry Pi terminal and simply type in if config. Okay, and you just want to get that INET address down here. So mine is 192.168.1.111. So it's simple as that. And yours might be a little different. If not, just copy it and put it back into your Python code in that section. Okay, so now that we have our proxy set up properly with the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. Next thing we're gonna go over is this URL here. So this is just the URL of the website you'd like to scrape. We're just scraping eBay and we're searching laptops, very generic. And we are just going to do a get request with the requests library, with a get method. And we're just going to pass the URL with the proxies. And it's really simple to do that. So this is just the simple parameter we need to actually pass that request to our Raspberry Pi first, thereby changing the IP address and allowing us to get more out of our web scraping. So that's really all we have to do there. And if we get a status code of 200, we know everything is successful, which is good. And we're just going to print that soup object, which is just a bunch of response content that we could do uh, certain data processing with afterwards, but we're just going to print it for the sake of this simple video. Otherwise we are going to say fail to retrieve web page and we're going to print the erroneous uh, status code. So let's go ahead and run this code after all that. So it should be pretty quick. So you can see we just got a bunch of response content, which is good. So that is a status code of 200 and everything worked as expected with the proxy. So that should enable us to make more requests to eBay if we are eventually getting throttled. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. I know we went over a lot and some people's systems may be a little different. So you can please ask me questions if you have uh, any troubleshooting issues, I'll be happy to help. Stay tuned, thanks for watching and take it easy everyone. Thank you.